Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion, and I'm Bill Stone. While I have your attention, I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, my merch store on Teespring, or a place on my website where you can support me further, and there are links to all of those in my description box below. When President Trump was elected in 2016, the American left lost their capacity for rational thought. Their behavior over the last two years has been nothing short of complete insanity. Apparently, after eight years of a Democratic president, they were no longer emotionally capable of dealing with a loss. Now, I find this really interesting because I'm a libertarian and I have experienced nothing but losses. I frankly never expect a libertarian to win. But by the same token, I don't lose my capacity for rational thought when they lose. The left has attempted to justify their insanity by any means necessary. One of the major ways is to claim that since Trump lost the popular election but won the electoral vote, he wasn't elected legitimately. Well, this is ridiculous, inasmuch as the Electoral College has been in effect for 230 years. This scenario has occurred repeatedly, numerous times, and to both parties. It is unique in this instance solely because the left has lost its capacity for rational thought. Being insane and unable to cope with loss, the left has continuously tried to contrive ways that are not intended to address anything about America's voting issues, but rather to ensure that Trump loses in 2020. This has included legislation to remove him from the ballot and outright intimidation of his voters. Now, many leftist politicians wish to alter the Constitution to abolish the Electoral College, making election to the president purely by popular vote. Now, in my video, The United States Needs the Electoral College, and there is a link to it below, I explain why this would be a very bad idea. And understanding that there is absolutely no chance of ever abolishing the Electoral College, leftists have decided to attempt to bypass it. This comes in the form of the National Popular Vote Interstate Compact, or just the Compact for short. The Compact is an agreement between a group of U.S. states and the District of Columbia to award all of their electoral votes to whichever candidate wins the most, most uh, votes in the entire United States. The Compact is designed to subvert the Electoral College by ensuring that the candidate who receives the most votes nationwide is elected president. Now, the compact is unconstitutional. It creates a requirement for electing presidents that does not exist in the Constitution. Now, I think you could do this, something like this constitutionally if it weren't a legislative pact between the states. The Constitution doesn't specify how electors must be selected. While it has usually been done by popular vote, there is nothing in the Constitution that says an individual state can't select electors based on the national vote. However, when this becomes a legal pact between the states, it is essentially usurping the Constitution. However, constitutionality is probably irrelevant because the Constitution is already violated by all of those in power on an hourly basis. Virtually nothing that the federal government does is constitutional by any sane reading of that document. While the challenge, the compact rather, is currently being challenged, it's quite possible that it will be allowed to stand. Now, the compact is on track to backfire completely in 2020. While crafted specifically to cause Trump to lose, it will instead cause him to win. What the left doesn't understand is that barring a significant change in the economy, a Trump victory is already assured, and this time he will win the popular vote. The biggest reason the Trump will win is because for two solid years, the Democrats bet the farm on Russian collusion. For two solid years, every Democrat with a voice proclaimed that Trump was a traitor working with Vladimir Putin to steal the election from Hillary Clinton. And there'd be damning proof real soon now. And then it all fell apart. It fell apart spectacularly. In fact, it didn't just fall apart, it blew up in the Democrats' faces. This left them looking vindictive 
hateful, and like idiots, bent on unseating a fairly elected president by any means necessary. Being hateful, vindictive idiots bent on unseating a fairly elected president by any means necessary completely turns away voters. Voters see correctly that Democrats should not be allowed access to the reins of power. Whatever Trump is, he's not an idiot, and Joe Average would rather see someone who's not an idiot in charge of things, even if it's not the greatest human being in the world. At least he's not a complete idiot, which is what the Democrats look like now. And Russian collusion was never going to go anywhere. Remember that the entire debacle started with a story shopped around to all the major news outlets for months, and none of them would run it because they couldn't find anyone who could substantiate it. It was only ever picked up by BuzzFeed, the weekly world news of the internet. They might as well be running stories on Bat Boy. If you get your news from BuzzFeed, click away. The secondary motto of my show, and that always scrolls past in my lower third, is nothing you see in the press is real. Nothing. And that goes double, triple, and quadruple for BuzzFeed. Another reason that Trump will win is that the Democrats have no viable candidates for 2020. All the Democrats running for their party's nomination are socialists and communists. This is patently obvious in both the Democratic debates and by the various candidates' tweets. Outside of pockets of America's largest cities, no one is a socialist nor a communist. In fact, they correctly despise socialism and communism because socialism and communism always fail, killing millions in the process. The entire 20th century is a history book in this fact. And in more recent times, one looked no further than Venezuela to see this fact. The overwhelming majority of voters will not vote for a socialist or a communist. And additionally, these candidates have no campaign platforms beyond the twin planks of orange man bad and I'll give you free stuff. This is not a winning platform. To begin with, aside from the insane left, voters don't believe Trump to be bad. Under him, the economy has gotten quite a lot better, something that has been entirely lacking in every president since 2008. They no longer believe press reports tarring Trump as a racist, sexist, homophobic monster. They correctly no longer trust the press because the press are obviously leftist propagandists. But beyond that, voters understand that free stuff only ever means higher taxes. Government can't give away anything for free, because government produces nothing of value. It must always increase taxes in order to give something away. Voters don't want higher taxes and won't vote for candidates that promise them. There is every indication that because of the left's insanity, the most socialist and communist person will become the Democratic Party's nominee, and they will have no chance in 2020. It's a foregone conclusion that Trump's base will not vote for a Democrat. Swing voters who disbelieve the press and don't want higher taxes will vote for Trump. While they may not like him, he will still be the lesser of two evils, and the voters will hold their noses while filling out their ballot cards. Even some centrists on the left have said that they will vote for Trump for the same reason. They don't support communism nor socialism and they will hold their noses and vote for the lesser of two evils. The compact hinges on Trump not winning the popular vote. However, as I've just explained, it's almost certain that he will. And for Democrats to assume that Trump will lose the popular vote, as he did in 2016, is foolishly overconfident. They don't understand that their candidate will stand no chance against Trump barring a significant change in the economy. As of this recording, the signatories to the compact, which are the green states shown here, include 196 electoral votes. And these states, as you can see, include California, New York, and several other coastal states. And there are other states with legislation pending to join this compact. They're the ones in the yellow right now. And these include another 108 electoral votes. So if no other state joins, that means that Trump will receive 196 electoral votes, including California's, and he'll only need 74 more to win the required 270. Now, if the remaining states join the compact, he would then receive 
304 electoral votes, 34 more than necessary for the required 270. And recall, by the way, that Trump won in 2016 with 538 electoral votes. No matter how you do the math, the compact assures a Trump victory. Democrats have already lost the capacity for rational thought. For some bizarre reason, they simply couldn't cope with losing in 2016, and it drove them mad. This has been called Trump derangement system, syndrome in the conservative press, and I've always kind of hesitated to use the term, as I'm unclear that it actually describes the condition. It's probably as good a term as any. What's really happened is that America's socialist metro areas cannot fathom that the rest of the country aren't socialists. They absolutely refuse to believe it. They are no longer operating within the bounds of observable reality. And having lost the capacity for rational thought, a Trump victory created by the compact will only feed their insanity. I am deeply afraid of what will happen if Trump wins. Liberals are already enraged beyond the capacity for rational thought. What will they do if Trump wins, especially as a result of the compact? Well, they'll be shocked, horrified, and even more enraged. If they think that how they felt when Hillary lost was as bad as it could get, they have another thing coming. This time, I don't know what they'll do. Will wailing at the top of their lungs be the end of it? I doubt it. They've already tried behaving like two-year-olds for the last two years, and where did that get them? Will tacitly agreeing with the Antifa, a violent, fascist, terrorist organization, be the end of it? I doubt it. They tried it for more than two years, and where did that get them? Democrats hate over half of their fellow countrymen with a hatred that I cannot comprehend. They really, honestly hate and despise them so viscerally and so deep in their hearts that I literally cannot understand it. What are they going to do with that searing hatred if Trump wins as a result of the compact? I fear civil war. I fear that since behaving like children and allowing a minority of people to be bloodthirsty would-be murderers and having this deep-seated, searing, irrational hatred in their hearts will make them think that it's time to start killing anyone who disagrees with them. And when they do, they will trigger a civil war. And if they do, I hope that people watching might pay attention to my video, Winning the Second American Revolution in a Week, and there's a link for that in my description box, because I talk about how such a civil war can be ended in only a week and with relatively little bloodshed. However, if a traditional civil war is waged, then there will be bloodshed in the streets. Brother will be pitted against brother, and father against son, and more will die than in the last civil war. If Trump wins, I urge Democrats, liberals, socialists, and communists to simply sit down, breathe for a while, and allow this unreasoning hatred that you've allowed to fester for so long to pass away. And there's a specific way of breathing. You don't just, <laughs> that's not the right way. There is a specific way of breathing. First off, I'm going to let out some breath here. You breathe in slowly through your nose. And you hold it for a second or two at the top. Breathe out slowly through your mouth. Hold it for a second or two at the bottom. Then breathe in through your nose. Hold it at the top and out through your mouth. And then hold it at the bottom for a couple of seconds. And it's perfectly fine, by the way, to make that noise I did on exhaling. Do this as often as you can. Try and do it so much that it becomes part of your normal breathing. You will honestly be a far better off as a human being if you do. I've been doing it for over 30 years, and I can tell you that it really does work. You can use this as a relaxation technique to some extent to control anxiety and even for some pain management if it's not too bad. 
And if you're an older person, like me, you may have noticed that your subjective passage of time has become faster. Breathing this way is one of the ways that you can slow your subjective passage of time, which subjectively will give you a longer lifespan. And there are some other techniques that you can use also to slow the passage of time. I might make a video about it. This isn't the place for it. But if Trump wins, put away the hatred, put away the insults, and start thinking for the first time in at least four years. Please sit down, breathe for a while, and allow the unreasoning hatred that you've allowed to fester for so long to finally pass away. Please rejoin the sane population. And that's all that I have to say about that. I'd love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to get back to you. So thanks for watching. That's all the time that we have today for this episode of the highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.